second half by Notre Dame. But by the same token, our turnovers, I think, kept us from really gaining control of the game in the second half. One of the things that happened is the game opened. And I, I think it was something had to concern you. The offense really wasn't hitting on all eight cylinders. No, seemed. no, we didn't. Well, the entire first half, we didn't play too well. Um, but uh, Notre Dame, uh, of course, has the had that uh, tremendous kicking game. And, uh, of course, that's what got them the lead in the first half. Uh, they moved down here. This is a bootleg play by Berline, their quarterback. When we were in a man coverage and everybody's running off with, <laughs> with pass receivers and he's running the football. Uh, but um, uh, these scrambles, of course, he got some yardage in the first half. Second half, he wasn't as fortunate, and we, we had uh, several sacks on him. Uh, so uh, his, his effectiveness is not quite as good. Defense. But here, here uh, excuse me, Jim, uh, Mike Hammerstein makes one of his uh, several great plays in this game. Uh, to stop them and uh, force them to go to the field goal. The defense really did come up with the big plays. You know, not maybe the interceptions or the fumble recoveries, but a big plays to stop them from getting in the end zone, settling for field goals like right. this. Right. Well, we had the big sacks, and we made the big plays on third down. Their third down successes were not very good. Um, here's a screen to Jamie Morris, who comes out for good yardage. Um, we didn't pass effectively in the first half. That, that definitely hurt us. Uh, here, Jim goes back to pass, and receivers are covered, and he steps up and sees a big hole and takes off, which he did several times during the game. And this is one of the keys to get the offense going. Is the well, fact that... I think it's important, you know, that you're able to do that. Uh, if you don't do that, I don't, you know, you're you're going to find yourself in a position where uh, you're not, you don't have the danger of a quarterback getting out of there running. Jamie played well too, and uh, I mentioned he's quick. But he's also powerful for a little guy. Well, he's, he's 175 pounds on a 5'7 frame. You know, that's fairly good. I thought Paul caught this ball. He made a great uh, jab at it. But I think going down, as you can see here, uh, right on his stomach, uh, he failed to hold on to it. I thought he was going to have it there for a touchdown. But he'll get his share as the season goes along. He looks like, like a very good, big possession receiver for him. Well, you. he just needs, uh, you know, he needs a little more experience. But he's coming fast. You had to uh, settle for a field goal, and then that didn't get there. Right. Well, Mike Gillette's first kick, he got under it a little bit. It, it, it was uh, right in the middle of the goal post, but he didn't have enough uh, strength on it, and then we didn't make it. So Notre Dame comes back, and uh, I was afraid this youngster was going to break out on us, but Garland Rivers makes a great tackle uh, to save it. Garland's one of the best tacklers on our defensive team. Jim. He also is a big hitter. I mean, yeah. he lets you know. Here, I thought tackled. we had him uh, hit for a loss, and... He gets out and gains a little yardage on the play. But um, once again, Rivers is up there to make the tackle. Notre Dame offensively now moving the ball a little bit and mixing it up pretty well. They're doing a good job uh, out of um, two tight end offense with two flankers and a single backbacker, usually Pinkett. And uh, they did a real good job. Here Garland comes in to deny a sweep. So we've seen Garland here with three <laughs> great tackles uh, on uh, this drive alone. And Pickett's a good back, so that's... Well, Pickett's the kind of a guy that's dangerous. He can get out of there at any time. And, of course, once they get any kind of field position at all, they go to the field goal and they get it. Uh, the youngster is an excellent, excellent kicker. But now the offense begins to come around. You get a little field position, allows you to do some things, like right. a reverse. Well, we run a reverse on a first down play here and get a first down um, with Eric Campbell catching uh, uh, the ball from... Um, uh, Jamie and coming around the left end. Um, here we uh, run a gap play in the trap, and Jamie's getting good yardage. What we uh, found out as the game went along was that we were able to run on him, and that was encouraging. Uh, plays like this, cut back as Thomas Walsh uh, getting uh, good yardage, but we found out we could block them and run. Uh, once you find that out, uh, I think it really helps a lot. Here's a swing pass out to uh, Jamie when the receivers downfield were covered, and he gets down in there close. Uh, but once again, uh, we failed to score in close. And if there's anything that was discouraging in the game, that was it. We've got to do some work on our goal line offense. Uh, to get those scores. A little over a minute left, 6-3, and I yeah. thought it was going to be halftime, 6-3, but Notre Dame now, comes back. Jim, see here, uh, we're playing pass, and they come out and run a sweep and get a big play with Pinkett, and it seemed like every time we played pass, they ran the ball. They did an excellent job, 
And, and you know, it's the type of thing, once they cross the 50, they've got three. And uh, so that was discouraging. Uh, the only uh, real uh, problem with our defense, I think, in this ball game uh, was in this hurry-up sequence where we failed to stop them and they got into field goal position and kicked the field goal to go ahead 9-3 to three at halftime. Now, going off at halftime, you said, well, we were able to block them some. We found right, that out. Right. So you, you, you didn't probably feel real bad about what was happening. No. Talk to the defense. First of all, they were doing a great job told them that we would move the football and we would control it because we can block them. And we're going to run the football and we'll control it. However, their corners were playing very deep on first down and we were thinking very seriously of going deep several times on first down. Now, we didn't do that because the safeties were up there playing so close on first down, we probably should have thrown deep more on first down. We will be back and we will take a look at the second half, which includes the comeback and victory for Michigan. So stay with us pass against them we could run with run against them everything was going fine we just we had a lot of plays that we wanted to run in the second half and we knew the way the offensive line was coming off the ball we could do just about what we wanted offensively jimmy arbaugh played an outstanding football game trailing nine th three at half you had to feel good about your chances only because you said you could block them you felt the defense was playing well and you said at halftime you told them we will move the ball and you got your break early because they gave it to that's you down right. close. Now that, that's money in the bank. Yeah. We hadn't had many of those, and that was, uh, uh, that was really good. That's the, the exact way we would have liked to start second half. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, the kick you were going to yeah. give them the ball, and they yeah. had the lead, and then all yeah. of a sudden this it's happens. too bad this youngster got hurt on this play, and he might have got hurt badly. Um, good recovery, though, by Heron, because that's well, a... Heron was going for the ball, and he's a, he's a tough kid. He'll go after the football, I can assure you that. So that, that helped a lot. And then a quarterback draw. Haven't well, seen we got into a situation. In a Coach Hanlon in the press box said they were going to be in man coverage, and um, uh, that's true. And the one man you don't cover in man coverage, of course, is the quarterback. So we ran the quarterback draw, and he ran into the end zone for a touchdown. It was an excellent call. i got to admit that, but I can't take credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> Give Coach Hanlon credit for that. Huh? <laughs> Well, Harbaugh did play well. You got to be pleased with the way. I, I think Jim's going to come along. He's, uh, you know, he had a tough first half. The second half, he played a lot better. I think as the season goes along, he's going to get tougher and tougher. And here, you give it right back. Well, in defense of Eric Campbell, I think that on this short kick, he thought that the ball hit one of his teammates. If that's the case, he had to recover. So rather than take a chance that someone had touched it, he tried to recover, and unfortunately, it was a mistake. And uh, so, but that's one of those things. And unfortunately, he got hurt on the play. But it does give them field position and, uh, and an opportunity to go down there and, of course, take the lead on us again. All right, but on the quick change thing that the defense always seems to rise, and well, they we did work, again. You know, we work on that sudden change, and uh, Coach Moeller's done a great job. Those kids uh, think that a sudden change is an opportunity for them. And, uh, and they did, and they responded. They stopped them. Uh, but they did get the field goal to take a two-point lead. So they're up 12-10. Now you got the ball back on a kickoff, so you got to go again the long way. And this drive had to be probably the most satisfying for you of the day. Well, it was it was important for us to move, and um, and we did it. Jim made a nice play here. His receivers were covered. He stepped in, and finally Paul got to open, and he threw it to him. Here's a pass to Gilvani Johnson uh, for a first down, and. So this drive is uh, what you would like to think would be typical of the drives you want this year. Uh, Jim comes rolling out here uh, and then uh, has some other ideas. I hope he doesn't do this too often, but in this particular case, it worked out all right. And uh, he got a first down scramble. It's a third down and seven situation. This is a very uh, key uh, play. And Jim throws the ball here to Eric Kasdan. Unfortunately, Eric's got a field to run in all day and drops the ball. But they roughed our passer, and we, it was a break for us, and we got the ball. Here under a blitz, Jim throws uh, probably a pass he might uh, probably shouldn't have thrown. And, uh, but uh, fortunately, uh, Bob Perriman made a great catch, and then we got the ball down to the uh, near the five-yard line, ran a counter play on the goal line, and got in for the touchdown. 
Notre Dame comes back. Uh, you know, they're not out of it yet because they've all. got some decent players, right. good quality, <laughs> skilled people. I think they're a little better than decent, Jim. But once again, I think the defense comes up. This is where the defensive line and the linebackers get it done with the sacks. Right. The sack is important. Here is uh, Mike Kammerstein again uh, with a big play, and, uh, and he's tough to handle in uh, pass blocking. I can assure you that. We've worked against him all fall, and he does an excellent job. So we get the ball back, and Jim scrambles and gets big yardage here, puts us into Notre Dame territory. Are some of those design scrambles, or is it just Jim no, I think has him, to recognize that's it? That's right. He's got to recognize when he has an opportunity, when he doesn't. Here's a deep pass, and I think this shows that obviously pass interference. He runs right into Paul Yoki, uh, and, uh, you know, to deny him an opportunity to catch the ball. It's a 15-yard penalty and a first down, so we get the ball, and we roll out and throw on a great catch by Gerald White. He takes the ball inside the five yard. Here's where we, uh, we've got to start doing a better job. We, we, had, we were forced to go with a field goal again, and uh, the margin is now eight points, which means Notre Dame, this late in the game, had an opportunity to tie us. Now, we should have scored a touchdown there and put that game on ice, <laughs> and, and we didn't do it. Here, we were going to do it again when we got possession again. Jamie runs down inside the 40-yard line, but unfortunately, the ball is knocked <laughs> loose. And that was the second turnover, and a big one, because this gives Notre Dame a chance to come back and tie. And they hit this pass here on a third and long situation, uh, gets them a first down. Now they're close to midfield, fourth down and 10. And Berline does a great job throwing the ball to Pinkett. Pinkett makes a fine catch. And they're down in our territory and threatening. And it's nail-biting time at this point. It appears that way <laughs> for that young lady. It's third down and five here, and uh, here we go again with a big sack uh, by Mike Hammerstein. And uh, now they're in a long yardage situation. They go to pass, and they tackle Mike this time. Same tackling, <laughs> and they throw the flag, but... Uh, uh, we intercept the ball when Doug Mowry dives in front of the receiver and uh, run out the clock and the game is over. Game's over. Michigan beats Notre Dame 20-12. to 12. Good opener for you. Question is, where do you need work? I know you think that the goal line offense needs work, yeah. but otherwise you're going to be pleased overall. Well, I think overall I am. Uh, you know, we played hard and uh, we played together and, and uh, I think this team's going to be a fun team. Jim, we're still a very thin ball club this year. We can't afford a lot of injuries. We lost Eric Campbell. Um, we lost Mike Mowry in the second half. Uh, we got to keep our team healthy if we're going to make a run for this thing. Well, it doesn't get any easier. Michigan's got to make a run next week at South Carolina. Stay with us. We'll have a scouting report look at the game count.